And in case of data mesh, the problem that it tried to solve, and it was a hypothesis formulated around 2018 and then shared publicly in 2019, was uh, getting value from data at scale using ML, AI, analytics in large and complex environments. In complex environments, not from technology perspective, not, a, not in terms of like volume of where data leaves, not from data integration perspective, but from both proliferation of use cases, this diversity of use cases and these aspirations, data aspirations to embed ML and AI in every function of the business and complexity in terms of the diversity of the sources of the data, where they can come from, how they can be supplied. And coming up with a pattern, as you mentioned, a, a, a socio pattern, an organizational operating model, as well as a, a set of architectural patterns. Data mesh didn't start from a particular technology, um, I guess, when we compare to data fabric as it, as it did. It came from an architectural pattern to allow us to still get access to the data that we want, wherever the data is, uh, in a, and a data that we can trust in and it's usable. And it, it is a complex uh, kind of topic. And it, to unpack complex topics, we have two routes to go. One route is kind of breaking down into first principles and that I've tried to do in my previous write-ups. And the other path is kind of put it in an example. So maybe like we take a few minutes and just look at the example to describe when data mesh is implemented in a complex, large organization. I use this fictional company in my write-up in the book called DAF. And uh, let's imagine we are in a fictional company that does digital streaming. They stream video and music, and they, they, their mission is to create this immersive artistic experience and connecting all the artists and uh, you know, listeners in the world. And imagine that they have these aspirations that they want to really take advantage of their data on the platform, off the platform, to you know, create that immersive experience. So as an example, um, for them to be able to scale out, I think the starting point that we see with a lot of modern digital businesses, which is an assumption of data mesh, is that businesses are decoupling themselves around kind of this idea of domains so that they can have a smaller group of people focused on a particular outcome. So in this particular example, they have a smaller group of people focus on the outcome of the best engagement, you know, digital engagement, like they're building players. They have a player domain, uh, you know, the, the, the best curated or personalized and smart playlist. So they have a playlist domain. And this group of people are cross-functional teams that not only build applications, but also share data, also use data to embed and really partner ML and AI and analytics with every application. So that's the idea of this domain-oriented and domain-oriented ownership that data mesh kind of relies on, piggybacks this idea of domain decentralization of organizational alignment of technology with business and says, let's align data with business. So in this, let's say, in this fictional organization, uh, the team responsible for playlists wants to come up with a new feature that enhances this playlist with uh, a set of targeted playlists when you run or when you cycle or do other sports activities. So if you think about the experience of these folks building uh, this new type of ML list, the first thing they need to do, they need to discover what kind of information they can find about their members, about the music they listen to when they are, I don't know, on a Peloton bike or where, when out there running. So then uh, they have a partnership team that focuses on expansion of this, you know, experience of listening to music on partner platforms like Peloton or cycling or other kind of running working groups and so on. So the first step is discovering what data they can find to create this playlist. Um, they find some data, maybe the partnership has some information about the members, but it's not, they, they have, they can automatically get access to it. They can explore the data. They can run computational notebooks to see what the shape of the data, the data that the partnership provides has all of the affordances they need to discover, use. And then they go, oh, actually it doesn't have the right fields. Like it doesn't have information about the, what the members are liking, what music they're playing and liking. So then peer to peer, they can go to the partnership team and say, you folks are, your business outcome is creating this integrated experience with partners. Can you give us the data, a data product that now we can use and know about what the user is listening? So this peer to peer data sharing happens there and they, that team, the partnership, because their outcome is integrated experience, they go and um, use the platform capability that have available to them. They don't need to go knock on the door on a data team, data analyst team. Right then and there, they can create the analytical data products 
augmented with the right documentation, with the schema, with all of the SLOs and guarantees. So for example, they know the integration APIs with the Peloton or whoever, whatever platform. So they can create guarantees to say, you know, this member, uh, member like musics, um, we can only get the APIs once a month or something like that. So they provide that information and that information, that data as a product, their job is really sharing the data as a product to delight the experience of that playlist team. They get and use it. Um, and throughout this whole process, the friction of sharing data, using data to put for analytical use cases is removed by a set of kind of higher abstraction platform capabilities. And the fact that the, the playlist folks could easily get access to that data without going through a centralized governance is indication is it requires a level of kind of sophistication and automation of access control and privacy respecting encryption and all of those policies that need to be automated and built. So that kind of the fourth pillar of ability to um, still have decentralized and domain oriented data sharing, peer to peer data sharing, while we respect the privacy and access control and all of those things. So that was just a very short story. And if you compare it to the past paradigms, you know, you kind of go knock on the door of a data team and they, 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 they are busy because they, everybody's knock on their do door to put data into the warehouse or the lake and maybe they prioritize it and then they have to go to a team partner team that has no incentive to share data with them, maybe create some integration, a bit flaky. So it's a process that is more frictionful, is a little bit more centralized. And did you think that story, we can't, we end up with these kind of four pillars of, uh, four first principles of data mesh that we've been talking about? 